and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tim Maybakshi, and this time we're going to be going over how you can use a Neuroff neural network in order to classify between two different types of hearing disorders. Now, actually, this is going to be the first video in a new series that I'm going to be doing called Healthcare, and this will range from anything related to healthcare. And of course, we're going to be mixing in a lot of technology and AI to make it really, really interesting. All right, so let's begin. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a data set from the UCI Machine Learning Repository, and we're going to be using it to train a neural network powered by the Neuroff API in order to create a neural network that can take some attributes about a person and classify whether he has a normal ear, an ear, or an ear with two different types of hearing disorders. And now, let's talk about that. All right, so basically, the data set that I'm going to be using was actually donated in 1992. Uh, and so basically, what we're gonna do is the data set contains around 200 different rows of training data. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're actually going to take the, like uh, all the rows in that training data. Uh, and by the way, there are 69 input attributes about the people uh, that are in this data set. So 69 uh, training attributes. Uh, and so basically, the neural network is fed 69 attributes about the, per the person uh, who, is, uh, who is going into uh, or who is going to be classified by this neural network. And what's going to happen uh, is these 69 attributes will, of course, go to a little hidden layer. The hidden layer will calculate uh, some magic values that we really don't care about just yet. Uh, and then those values will be given our out, will give us our output. And this output will classify uh, what type of hearing disorder they have. So basically, as I said, we're going to input 69 attributes about our patient or really any person. And we're going to send that through the neural network over here. This is our neural network phase. And then we are going to output either if the user or the patient has a normal ear or if their cochlea has aged and that's their hearing problem or if it's something to do with their cochlea but we don't exactly know what it is. All right, so that's basically what we're going to be doing today, and I'll explain a lot more about what's going on in the middle of the neural network in the actual coding part, but uh, I guess let's go through a little uh, science explanation right now. Uh, so, if you're wondering what exactly cochlea means here, well, it's actually quite simple. The cochlea is responsible for, well, your hearing. Uh, and so what happens uh, is the cochlea is actually powered by something called the uh, vestibulocochlear nerve. And the vestibulocochlear nerve basically is one of the, uh, one of the 12, specifically the eighth cranial nerve, uh, which goes from your inner ear in your cochlea to your brain. And so basically what a, co uh, what a cranial nerve is, a uh, cranial nerve, uh, there are actually 12 cranial nerves. Uh, and so these are nerves that don't originate from the spinal cord, but instead originate straight from the inside of your brain. Uh, and so uh, this is what that would be one of those uh, nerves. Uh, and so basically, uh, the vestibulocochlear nerve uh, could also be called the auditory vestibular nerve. Uh, and as the name suggests, not only does it uh, does it control your hearing, uh, and yeah, your hearing, it also does uh, handle things like your balance uh, and of course the equi equilibrium of your body and making sure that you don't tip over as you're standing up straight uh, and so that's basically what that does although the cochlea is only concerned with hearing and the labyrinth does all the uh, all the balancing uh, the this nerve transmit that that transmits that information from the inner ear to the brain but now though, uh, without any more further ado, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to go over to the code part now where I'm going to show you exactly how you can implement this neural network. And of course, we're going to be reaching around a 98.9% .9 accuracy on this data set. All right, so let's get to the code part now where I'm going to be showing you how exactly you can do all of this. 
All right, so welcome back to the code part, and now I'm going to be showing you how exactly you can import your data sets and train this neural network that I have created. All right, so let's begin. Uh, now I've actually got two data sets, the training data set and the testing data set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave the, script, the links down in the description to actually download those two data sets. So that if you'd like to, you can actually uh, train your own neural networks on this exact same data as well. Because what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken that uh, non-standard data that was provided with this data set and I've converted it into nice standard data so that you can easily import it into your neural networks uh, because right now it is a little troublesome uh, to get it into your neural networks uh, due to the fact that it's not a standard data set it's not a data sorry it's not a standard format for a data set but now I've converted it to one so that you can take a look at that all right, so let's take a look at how this is going to work. Uh, so I've already got my data sets, uh, and one is a training and one is a test set. And inside of the studio here, what I've gone ahead and done is we're going to create a new data set under training sets, and we're going to call this audiology training. Uh, and we're going to have 69, uh, sorry, not 59, 69 inputs, and we are going to have three outputs corresponding to normal ear, uh, cochlear age, or cochlear something. We're going to be loading this data set from a file, and well, of course this file will be for my downloads here, uh, although I have created this by myself, and it's called, and it's called randomfinalaudio.csv. I'm going to click on finish then, and as you can see, it successfully imports my 99 rows of training data. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to tell it to save this new data set. Under test sets, I'm going to create another new data set, and I'm going to call this audiology testing. Of course, we're going to have 69 inputs and 3 outputs once more, and I'm going to be loading this up from a testing file that I've created called testers.csv. As you can see, it successfully imported my few rows of training data. I'm going to click OK and tell it to save. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create a, neur a, neur a new feed-forward neural network, or in this case, it's called a multi-layer perceptron network. Uh, and so once you uh, name your network, and I'm just going to call this audiology uh, 90 neurons, because we're having uh, we're going to have 90 neurons in our hidden layer. Uh, and so this is what I'm going to call the network. And of course, this is a multi-layer perceptron type network. We're going to click on next, and of course we're going to have 69 input neurons, uh, and we've also got 9 hidden neurons as well as 3 outputs. We're going to make sure we do use bias neurons, as those do help us with generalization, uh, and we are going to be connect. Uh, we are not going to be connecting our input to output neurons. After that, we're going to be doing the transfer function or the activation function, as it's more commonly known, as sigmoid uh, instead of hyperbolic tangent, and our learning will be normal back propagation. Once that's done, we're going to click on finish, and as you can see, it creates our nice little neural network here, which has 69 inputs and 3 outputs, as well as 90 neurons in between. Now, if we were to do the math here, as you can see, we've got 6,370 uh, 6, uh, connections from input to hidden, and from hidden to output, we've got 273. Uh, and since we've also got biased neurons in the mix, if we were to do um, 70 times 91 uh, times 3, this should be exactly how many neurons we have in total, uh, and this should be nine. Uh, sorry, how many connections between neurons that we have in total, and this should technically be 19,110 uh, different connections between our neurons from layer to layer. Uh, and so that is how we will go. Or uh, technically, actually, uh, this should not have been. Uh, it shouldn't. But it shouldn't have been calculated that way. It should be. Um, 70 times 91, uh, which is that, and then plus um, that 91 uh, times 3. Uh, so this is actually how many connections we have in total. Sorry, that was the uh, incorrect math there. Uh, but this is the actual total number of connections we have between our neurons. Uh, and so we're actually going to be able to uh, train this network with these many connections. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag in my training data set from the training sets here to this neural network. And as you can see, it grabs that training data set. And I'm going to click on the train button. 
I'm going to set the maximum error to 0.01 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the learning rate and momentum to normal values and currently that is 0 0.2 and 0 0.7 respectively. Of course, I'm going to tell it to display my error graph so I can actually see how the, how the training is going for now. And then I'm going to click on train. Now, this may take a moment, or maybe not, depending on how the computer wants to take this. Uh, and it, Okay, as you can see, that was actually very quick. Uh, just under 160 iterations required to reach this error rate. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually drag in our testing data set, and I'm going to click on the test button. As you can see, our total mean square error here is 0 0.0169022, etc, etc. So if we were to do 1 minus this, and then multiply this by 100, as you can see, we're currently reaching 98.3% accuracy. Uh, sorry, 98.3% accuracy. And so, this is actually quite good accuracy, imagine, for just a 0 0.01 error rate, which is actually quite high, technically. Not high, necessarily, uh, but it isn't the lowest error rate that you could hope for. Uh, and we were able to achieve quite a very nice accuracy, actually. And as you can see, like, for example, this last one here, the desired output was 0, 1, 0, uh, and the neural network outputted almost 0, 0 0.99, and then almost 0, even though these numbers here are not in the training data set. That's something I really like to stress. Those numbers were not in the training data set. Uh, the training and test sets are completely separate. Uh, the neural network has never been exposed to these inputs before. It's never been told what the outputs are for these inputs, and we were still able to achieve such a nice error rate. In fact, if I just uh, note this down, 98.3%, and if we were to train again, uh, what I can do is uh, even further decrease this error rate. Let's just say 0 0.005. But the thing is, I'm going in increments here, because oh, it's done already. Uh, and the reason I'm going in increments here, and I'm not just saying, okay, why not just go for a really small error rate, oh, uh, and I made a mistake, I, t I uh, trained the neural network on the testing set, that's something you should never do. Uh, but let's just create a new neural network here. Let's create this um, second network, uh, again, same network configuration. So basically, I'm going to train this again, and let's just uh, achieve a slightly lower error rate on the training set. Now again, the reason, as I was saying before, the reason I'm going in these sort of increments here, and I'm not just straight going for a really small error rate, is because the thing is, I don't want to overfit to my training set so that my test set gets hardly any accuracy at all. It's because right now we're getting 98.3%, but if my neural network were to just memorize what's in my training set and not really generalize to the fact that, okay, these parameters means normal ear and these parameters mean a cochlear age and these parameters means normal cochlear issue, uh, then what would happen is it really wouldn't work. There's no point. It's just memorizing the inputs and outputs to everything. Uh, and so that's why we want to go in increments here. Uh, and in fact, if you'd like to know more about uh, what I'm doing called the early stopping algorithm, uh, then you can actually see a video about that that I created that's on my YouTube channel. A link to that will be in the description below. Okay, but now as you can see, we've gone to a slightly uh, lower error rate. I'm going to drag in the testing set and click on test. As you can see, if I just paste this in here, we have now reached a 98.7% accuracy. I'm rounding that, by the way, 98.67 to be more precise, uh, percent accuracy. And as you can see, we're just going up and up and up uh, as we are continuing to train. It's just that, again, what can happen is, like, for example, if I were to go back to my neural network, click on the train button, and then get maybe too low of an error rate, well, uh, maybe not even this uh, low, let's try this low, for example, no, uh, that was quick. Uh, let's just test it once more then. Or I trained it on the testing set again. But you, you probably do get my point where we want to train it to a certain point where the accuracy on the training set doesn't really matter to us. It's the accuracy on the test set. Because the training set is something that the neural network can always just memorize, if you think about it. We want the neural network to be able to take inputs that it's never seen before. There could be a completely unique case. And it's never heard from someone who's, let's say, 43 years old uh, and has these parameters. It's never heard from that type of person before. But we still want it to be able to think that, okay, usually these attributes are associated with cochlear age. These attributes are associated with normal ears and then weigh those together and then finally find our answer. But if we're just memorizing a few cases, there's no point.
really there's no point uh, and so that's why i recommend you always train these things in increments unless you have some default implementation of an early stopping algorithm in place in which case that is absolutely perfect and you can continue to train uh, until you believe that your accuracy on the test set is going up and then down to stop it at its peak uh, in fact you can find out more i'm not going to go into too much detail about this algorithm but you can find out more about that in a separate video that I created about overfitting neural networks and memorization versus generalization. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video. To okay, sorry, <laughs> wrong button. But that is going to be it for this video today. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you liked the video, please do make sure to like the video. And if you think this could help anybody else that you know, like your friends or family, please do consider sharing the video as well. Of course, though, if you have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, please do make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Email them to me at tajimanny.gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimanny. Of course, though, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, you can do that by clicking on the little bell button beside the subscribe button in order to be notified by email and across Google platforms on the little notifications button in the corner uh, whenever I release a new video or new content. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see a lot more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, because it really, really does help out a lot. Alright, so thank you very much for watching today. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.